Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at a pen which I kind of like the look of uh, but some of you might not and that's the Pelican M101N. It's a uh, kind of a throwback vintage um, series of pens which Pelican came out um, in homage with uh, for their nine, their pens that came out in the 1930s. Um, this is the, the edition which came out in 2019, I believe. Um, I think there's quite a few other more famous models prior to this, like the there's one that has a lizard uh, skin finish, and there's also one with a tortoise shell finish. But this is basically just a normal cellulose acetate finish uh, pen in kind of a grayish blue and that's what we're going to be speaking about today <clears throat> so starting off um, just looking at the pen and its looks i mean what makes this pen vintage in pelican's mind <clears throat> so i mean it won't be hard to kind of uh, tell without comparing it with another pen that Pelican makes a modern uh, Pelican, if you want to call it. And that's actually the M200. And now it becomes a little bit clearer why this particular pen here, the M101N, is kind of seen as vintage. Because um, the first thing that kind of sticks out is the fact that the N of the of the cap is is kind of proportioned in such a way that it's really really different from any other modern pen out there i mean if you didn't really think about it you know i'm just bringing out a preppy most modern pens have uh clips starting out pretty much at the, at the top of the cap however the m101n doesn't it has that big space down here i think i think that's the first point which harks back to that vintage look. The second thing would be the clip. And you're looking at the traditional Pelican uh, beak um, um, like clip. The M101N has this very nicely arched uh, classic looking clip. It reminds me a little bit of the clip which the Quebeco, uh I think it's called a classic, actually has something that's curved like this. It's a very nice, beautiful, beautiful looking clip very practical as well with uh, you know this, this end sticking out which makes it so very easy to kind of put um, your shirt pocket um, the next thing which makes this pen probably look a little bit more vintage than this pen is the fact that they use uh, different materials so I mean the pen itself is made from resin same as the M200 However, this area of the pen down here is made out of cellulose acetate. Now you can see that swirling pattern down here. It's not done using resin like, like the M200. Uh, it's, it's actually using a sheet of cellulose acetate, which is kind of uh, some heat treated or molded using heat onto this part of the pen down here. Now it doesn't feel any different compared to a resin pen. Maybe it feels a slightly different, maybe slightly sl more slippery, but uh, that's that's probably another difference. I mean, nowadays, pens nowadays don't actually use materials like these because it's, uh, you know, probably harder to get come by. That could be a reason. So that actually kind of uh, is what I think in terms of looks. Uh, but how about the performance of the pen? I mean, and this brings me to probably the reason why you would spend more than double or even triple of M200 or even way more, right? Uh, to, to buy a M101N versus the M200. Because if you look at the nibs, uh, if I can get my camera to focus, you'll see that the m 101 and nib has that really uh, retro like pelican logo 
Um, it's very simple, unadorned nib, uh, that, and compare, compare that with the Pelican M200 nib, which is also plain and unadorned, but uh, you definitely can tell this is like a little bit more vintage looking. This is a rhodium plated 14 karat gold nib. Uh, we'll get to the writing later on compared to this one, which is like a gold, gold plated uh, steel nib. So um, what I think in terms of the size of this pen, uh, you can see kind of a very interesting aspect of the M101N compared to like a standard M200 or M400. Um, M400 is about the same dimension as the M200 in that uh, if you take the two pens unposted, uh, I don't have the dimensions, but I might put them in the description uh, of the video. Uh, the M200 is a pretty short pen at about 12, uh, 12 centimeters, if I'm not wrong, from tip of the nib all the way to the end. As you can tell, the M101N is way shorter. The things change, however, when you actually post these pens, and I believe that uh, in, a, in order to use the M101N, it probably has to be posted unless you have really, really small hands. So if I were to kind of post the M101N, and it does post very securely because of these little, uh, this area down here, where this is the piston mechanism, it, it doesn't actuate the piston mechanism if you twist like that, uh, because there's, a, there's enough of a, of a Diff kind of a spacing or, or kind of a different materials. But as you can tell, when I post the M200 and the M101N, something happens and the M101N becomes like a way longer pen. So I thought it was an interesting uh, point of comparison between the M101N versus the M200. Uh, probably the last point of difference the two sections of the pen are pretty much identical, a pretty small and, sh and narrow section. I think it's about nine, uh, nine millimeters, if I'm not wrong, um, in terms of girth. And, how, and the, the two nips are interchangeable. You can actually unscrew the M101N snip, put it, put it in M400, I believe even the M120, um, if I'm not wrong. And, and obviously the M200 uh, uh, snips are all interchangeable. Um, and as you can see, the ink window area down here, uh, the M101 ends has a bigger ink window, right? So those are my kind of the observations of the M101 and uh, this pen, like I mentioned earlier on, is very comfortable when used posted. In terms of the filling mechanism, it is a typical Pelican efficient uh, ink filling uh, mechanism. Uh, so no, no problems there. Uh, probably one of the best in the business. Uh, I wanted to kind of uh, do a little bit of writing to show you probably the, you know, what does a 14 karat uh, nib in, I mean, in this size, uh, compare with steel one. So this one is actually um, in broad as well, my M200. And this M101N snip is also in broad. So we'll kind of take a look at how the writing kind of stacks up. So it's a very wet nib. Um, I find it very wet and 
um, extremely, I mean, I wouldn't call it extremely smooth, but relatively smooth. It has, it definitely has a very, uh, you know, go, it, you definitely can tell by using this nib that it's a gold nib because of the softness, softness and kind of the delicacy of the line which it produces. Incidentally, um, the design of the nib is, is kind of stubbish. Right, I'm not sure whether it will come out on camera compared to the M200. It has a little bit of squared off look to it compared to this pen. So this pen is it's a typical, um, I wouldn't call cheap, broad design where it's just a ball of, of uh, kind of a ball of uh, tipping material. It's pretty round, right? So I mean, if you were to compare with the writing experience from this pen, which is also in broad. Incidentally, the, I think the inks are the same, which is uh, Pelican um, Royal Blue 4001. So this pen's uh, writing performance is not too shabby at all, right? Um, it's definitely not as wet as the M101N. Um, the line it produces is rounder. It doesn't have that stubbish feel like I spoke about. And in terms of softness, it's not as soft, right? So in terms of writing performance, I am very happy with this pen. I think most people will be very happy with with the performance of this pen. I'll just bring up the, the writing sample to kind of let you have a, a different feel of, of how the nips perform. So in conclusion, what do I think about the M101N? I, I think it's a worthy addition to my, uh, my collection of Pelicans in terms of my personal preference in terms of uh, fountain pen brands, I think that Pelican and Pilot are, are up there in terms of my favorites. The, the elephant in the room is actually the price of this pen because um, it's, it might not be the most, the pen that brings you the most value if you buy it at full retail price. Uh, I've seen it at places that are selling for about $800 and that's 800 US dollars. Uh, in Singapore, it's it's probably in the region of 800 over dollars as well. And to me, it's, it's a pretty expensive pen if you buy it at full retail. However, I did not buy this at uh, full retail. I bought this pen uh, secondhand. And um, I think you'll be doing well if you manage to get this, this pen at about the 200 to 300 uh, Kind of price point and at that price point i think it's definitely worthy to be added to your collection um, and where would it fit in my collection it would be definitely uh, a kind of a travel pen because it's definitely small enough um, to kind of travel with yet it performs like a bigger pen should so that concludes my m101 and uh uh, kind of a quick look um, Just put my M200 side by side to it kind of give you a vast look in terms of the sizes of the pen uh, So I hope you found something uh, useful in the review uh, Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. Bye